I did some digging online and got lucky and found the manual for this WaveTech 1080. I've just skimmed it, but I've got a pretty good idea now of what these controls do and how it can be used. So, here's a quick run through. I got it turned on. You got two displays here. One is the output frequency in megahertz and output level in dBMs. That's into a 50 ohm load. There are three modes of operation here. CW, which I've got it in now, is just a sine wave. There's no sweep whatsoever. And the output is just what you see here. So I can go all the way from 5 megahertz all the way up to 1 gigahertz, which is just one control, no band switch, no nothing. Now, that does make it a little bit hard to zero in on a frequency, so they do give you this fine control here that lets you tweak it a little with a little bit more control. Now this isn't really meant as an RF generator so that's why they only give you one digit of precision. What this is normally used for is to set the center frequency on the sweep. So say for example you want to sweep like an FM radio IF stage of 10.7 megahertz. You just set this on 10 which will be the center frequency then maybe set it for a sweep of half a megahertz or so. So it'll go to from like nine and a half to ten and a half, more or less. And here's the output control. You got a low and a high with this switch here, and then you got a uh, a nice pot here to control the output level. Now, for the, to show you how the sweep works, I'll have to rearrange the cables a little bit. Um, but that's what the delta F mode is. Basically, um, you take the RF output and feed that to your device under test, radio, TV, whatnot. And this is meant to go into a 50 ohm load, so you may need to make a matching pad. For example, your TV might be 75 or 300 ohms. To really do an accurate alignment, you're going to want to make a matching pad to uh, match the impedances. And then the output of your IF stage you would want to connect to a demodulator probe like this which uh, basically just has like a germanium diode and a resistor and a capacitor in there to convert the RF to uh, DC that goes to the demod in vertical out goes to your scopes y-axis horizontal out goes to your scopes x-axis I've got them both displayed independently here to give you some idea of what's going on this top trace here is the horizontal output that would go to the X axis on your scope which would drive the display trace horizontally and then this would be the uh, vertical output there it makes a lot more sense when I put the scope in XY mode okay I rearranged my cables a bit so now I've got the RF out going to just this 50 ohm dummy load and that's attached to my demodulator probe going right back up here so what we've got again is that horizontal trace and on the bottom is the vertical and because I'm just going into a dummy load it should pass all frequencies with equal amplitude so that's what I've got here so I've got the still set on my 10 megahertz and I have a very narrow sweep width um, and uh, as you can see it as it should it, it should be a straight line as it's passing all the ampli all the frequencies with equal amplitude. If there was a tuned IF stage you might see something like a hill where some frequencies would get attenuated, some amplified. But when you're just using a straight uh, passive load like this it should be a straight line. Now where things get a lot more useful is when I put this into XY mode. expand this out a bit so now the vertical y-axis is being driven by the output of this and good enough and the x-axis is being driven by that horizontal uh, output of this so basically it's sweeping from left to right low frequency to high frequency Now the sweep width on this works a little, a little strangely. 
you've got this control here that goes 0 to 9 and then a knob or a variable control over here and it says megahertz times 100 well, what this means is take this number times 100 megahertz and then this variable control will add an additional 0 to 100 megahertz so if I put this on 1 and dial this in about halfway it means I'm sweeping 150 megahertz uh, but normally for doing radio or TV work you're going to be sweeping probably no more than 15 or 10 megahertz which is why when you uh, look at this older gear just for TVs they have sweep width it's fixed these are some FM ranges these are TV ranges this Jackson has sweep widths of 0.1 megahertz to 18 megahertz so I'm going to be leaving this on zero I think all the time and just using this control this control over here controls the rate at which this is sweeping from the low to the high frequency right now I've got it on the fastest setting if I slow this down way down I think you, you can actually see that it's <laughs> you know it's sweeping low to high low to high well I'm interesting of course when you've actually got something in the circuit that uh, <laughs> Uh, has a variable response to the frequencies, but uh, this is the basic procedure you go through to make sure your seat generator is working properly. Now this stuff over here is to make the markers. This is one of the cooler features on this device. All my other sleep generators, like this, you get a single marker and it will appear wherever you dial this in. So if I set this to 10 megahertz, I should get a blip right about the middle of this line. That's the 10 megahertz mark. Same with the Jackson, same with my Ico, and so on. But on this, there is no variable marker. What you can do is it puts in fixed ticks at every 100 megahertz mark, at every 10 megahertz mark, and every 1 megahertz mark. And they're variable, and they're different sizes. The 100 megahertz markers are the tallest, and then the medium sized ones are the 10 megahertz ticks, and the 1 megahertz marks are the smallest ticks and you can control these which ones are turned on by flipping this control make a lot more sense if I turn some of these on and there they are I'm varying the sweep width here so if I wanted to sweep oh about 10 megahertz I would dial it into about there so there's my 10 megahertz mark and each one of these ticks is about 1 megahertz so we've got a little more so we correspond pretty much to the uh, right about there so now you can see that this is also very linear which is also an excellent feature to have so the center is my 10 megahertz and then each tick the way I have this set up so there's 11 megahertz, 12 megahertz, 13 megahertz, 14 megahertz, 15 megahertz, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. You can control the shape of these ticks a little bit so there's the smallest, there's the largest. So you can see if you make these these markers really large amplitude and wide they could very well cause you to misinterpret the IF response you're looking at. So. You want to dial these down as small as you can such that you can still see them, so maybe something more like that. Now notice this line is tilting a little bit. There's actually a control on the back of this called, I think, a tilt or an angle control that would allow me to uh, tilt that a little bit and flatten it out. It's sort of a compensation depending on the type of load you uh, type of load you're using plus. I have not gone through and calibrated this or anything. I got this off eBay. I don't know, you know how much it was used before, and I got kicked around in the mail and so on. So probably needs to be uh, gone over a little bit. But otherwise, it seems to be working really, really well. And that is why I'm going to be using uh, this over these other uh, older devices. This last mode, full sweep, that will sweep from 0 to 1 gigahertz, which I can't imagine I would ever do. 
this is a general purpose device and uh, I think one of its applications is for like the cable TV industry where you very well may want to see how well signals transmit from the full 0 to 1 gigahertz because like cable TV uses quite a bit of the bandwidth on that coax cable so that's the basics of how a sleep generator works um, so now what's uh, now what I want to do next is Oh, by the way, I should mention, you can also input a, a, fi a variable marker in here. So if you took an RF generator and hooked it into here, you could still have all these stationary ticks at the 1 megahertz and 10 megahertz increments. And then you can have a variable one. Um, yeah, what the heck, I'll try rigging that up. I want to make sure it works. I guess I'll try using this WaveTech sweep generator. This is an older version of this. And it's very similar. Um, where it's got the same type of harmonic markers. This will do like the 1 megahertz, the 10 megahertz, and the 50 megahertz ticks. This will go from, I think, 0 to 500 megahertz and so on. It's just older. But if I put this into fixed frequency mode, I can just use it as an RF generator and feed the output of this into here. Okay, I got this guy powered up. I put this into CW mode, so it's just a fixed frequency sine wave just like the CW mode on this guy. I put it down to the lowest frequency range. The, on this, the outer knob is the frequency, coarse frequency, and the inner knob is fine frequency. And this, has a, this is the output control. We have got multiple levels here, and then a fine control here. So, there it is. Very cool. So I got the RF output of this going to the marker input there. Again, excuse all my cables. <laughs> but uh, uh, there it is. So that blipped it's moving back and forth. That's my variable marker. So if, say, I wanted to find the response at exactly 10.7, I would have to hook up a frequency counter to this and get this dialed to exactly 10.7 and let's say the 10.7 was right about there and then I could see on my response curve what exactly or you know make sure it's peaking say 10.7 megahertz and again you could you could um, cut the sweep width down to really hone this in you know, and then put this marker exactly where you want it So it seems like the one downside I've got right now is I need an, a really good RF generator with a um, either a built-in digital display or I got to patch in a uh, frequency counter like this guy somewhere. A lot of these uh, generators have connectors in the back, so there might be an additional RF output on the back. So I could hook that right to my frequency counter. Otherwise, I got to make some kind of uh, Y connection or something so I can feed it into both. To finish off this video, I thought you guys might like to see a practical application of this sleep generator. So what I've done is pull out a shortwave receiver I built back in the early 90s. This was designed to receive WWV, the uh, government NIST broadcast from uh, Colorado, I think. They broadcast on 5, 10, and 15 megahertz at about 10,000 watts. And they broadcast time and uh, some digital tones. You can use that signal to actually calibrate your test equipment like frequency counters and receivers because they, they broadcast on an extremely accurate frequency. Uh, I think they use a, like an atomic clock as a reference and it's accurate to, uh, I don't know, at least six digits after the decimal point, I think, maybe more. I, I got this uh, design out of a uh, radio hobbyist magazine. Back then I was much more into digital stuff, especially microcontrollers, and my radio theory and practical experience was kind of weak. This did work, but it never worked all that well. What, what I've hooked up here is I took my sweep generator and hooked it to the antenna input coil here. So here's, the, here's where the antenna would go, and the other side's ground. And I've got my demodulator probe on the other side of that, which is a 
uh, a resonance circuit uh, with the secondary on a coil in parallel with this trimmer cap, and that goes into the mixer oscillator here. And here is the resulting response curve I get. I've got this centered on uh, 10 megahertz with a sweep of um, about 5 megahertz on either side. Well, the larger markers are the 10 megahertz ticks, so that's 10 megahertz right there. And the smaller ticks are 1 megahertz, so I've got it set up so there's about one tick for each, uh, corresponding to the, the grid on my scope. Tweak that over a little bit. There we go. Okay, so. That resonance peak should be way over here. But I'm actually at, see, it's the uh, 10, 11, 12. I'm peaking at about 12 and a half megahertz. So let's see if I can trim this capacitor here and move that resonant peak over. So it's tough to do this one handed, but I think I can manage it. Well, I can make it go higher. But no, that, that's as low as it'll go. So, if I want to make this peak at 10 megahertz, I am going to have to increase the capacitance or change number of turns on this transformer. And uh, I think that explains why this never worked very well. Because <laughs> uh, imagine if your signal's coming in over here, it's getting attenuated quite a bit. Uh, and if this peak was over a 10, uh, it'd be a, you'd get much, much better reception. So, that's why it's so nice to have equipment like this. So you can really see what's going on in your circuits. True, a little bit expensive, but you don't have to get a sweep generator this fancy. Actually, I've got earlier videos where I use this WR50B, and uh, that works just fine as well. And you don't have to use a scope anywhere near this fancy. In fact... I've got an upcoming video where I hope to resurrect this scope, which is a, an early Philco 3-inch scope from, uh, I think, the early 50s. And I'll show you that uh, even with a scope like this, you can do alignments just fine. The key is these markers. It doesn't matter if your scope's calibrated, what the sensitivity is like, if you've got this fancy grid and all that. As long as you've got these markers, and you can see this curve, you can align it so that the peak of this curve corresponds to this marker. Alright, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it.